long have yes. you been in the business now? Let oh, me. forever. Um, let me see. <laughs> the, I, I was first published when I was 21, and I'm 44. Oh, okay. So okay. 23 yeah. years? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've grown up with the romance business. So have you noticed yourself changing your characters and, and how they think and how they react in situations uh, based on uh, how people well, act actually, and think today? Not based so much on the business. Okay. It's really based on myself having matured because I mean the kind of guy that I was attracted to when I was 21 mm -hmm. is not is not you know the kind of man that I'm attracted to today so I think you know my personal view of the world has really colored mm -hmm. how I've written and how my characters respond to things I think my much earlier historical romance novels my heroines would maybe cry a little easier or <laughs> or, or maybe wait around a little longer for the hero to rescue them <laughs> and so now I've got a uh, very assertive characters both male and female and I I think it's much sexier when you have a relationship of equals yes and you know that that's where the challenge and the fun is versus the man always rescuing the woman mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think in today's society too as women and men are much more equal I think than years ago it uh, mm -hmm. that's what women are looking for too in, in their romance novels so. yes I think so someone who yeah. respects their intelligence mm -hmm. and uh, in but someone who has a great sense of humor mm -hmm. and uh, I think humor probably has has come into my books a lot more, especially since I got married. Because uh, Greg's a pretty funny guy, and uh, uh, you know he he actually has influenced my heroes quite a bit. In fact, there's quite a lot of him in Jack Travis because uh, Greg's from Texas as well. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to reread that then. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Find out what your husband's all about. Huh? Yeah. Well, he likes power tools, so you know. <laughs> Yeah, the crib scene was cute too, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that would have been how. And I, that was funny because um, Ella it, has the baby now. And we won't say whose baby she is because obviously readers will find out more about the story. But uh, she is now at her apartment, getting ready to put together the crib. And of course, the directions look like they're all written in foreign language. That's right. Even if it's in English, we it's just difficult to figure out how to do that. That's right. And there's, and there's a bag full of like you know 20 different kinds of yeah, screws yeah. because I've tried to assemble things before, and it's just amazing these diagrams and all these little parts. And so I'm like, Greg. Yeah. But you know, it's it's. And Jack came they do to the it. rescue. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know what it, how they know how to do that. What do you find to be the most difficult aspect of writing a book? Um, let alone a romance book. Do the characters come easy for you? Is that the first thing that comes to mind and you kind of build your story around that? Or does the story itself come into mind and you try and fit your characters into it? It, it always starts with the characters and I, and okay. I always build from uh, one character with a particular kind of dilemma. For example, in Smooth Talking Stranger, I knew that I wanted Ella to have to face the responsibility of caring for a baby, you know, mm -hmm. which she never had before. And then I uh, started to think about uh, the, the possible chemistry that she would have with Jack Travis. Uh, for a little while, she suspects that he might be the father of her sister's baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought if, if she is a feminist and a vegetarian, you know, what better combination than to put her together with someone like Jack Travis, you know. And, and it didn't take her long to give up the vegan lifestyle. <laughs> on it. One okay. steak and she was done. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Actually, Jen Enderlin told me she liked it that she cheated on her, uh, her uh, vegetarian boyfriend by having a steak with Jack. So, <laughs> so yes, he, he, he talked her out of that pretty quickly. But um, so I, I like to set up the characters in the mm -hmm. conflict. The difficult thing is that some books uh, even when they end up being, I think, well done and, and well received, uh, you don't feel the spark of inspiration or magic so much as it, it seems like work. I mean, sometimes my job actually is work. And um, so I question myself a lot. There's a lot of uncertainty. And I will rewrite and rewrite and rewrite, just trying to make sure that it's coming out well. Now, with a book that I'm doing right now, like Tempt Me at Twilight, for some reason, the magic's there. I'm excited every day, and I know the spark is there. Uh, for other books, even when I'm happy with how they turn out, it's a little more grueling. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That mm -hmm. probably happens with everybody, I imagine. Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's a question for you. More and more, I've noticed uh, authors are incorporating safe sex into their characters' mm -hmm. lives, and especially in our romance books, is okay. that's a main component of, of what we enjoy in our romance books. Uh, as an author, do you feel uh, some responsibility in maintaining certain standards in your stories, or is, I mean, is it conscious of of including uh, that in your stories, or or is it's just how how well, you think of things? To to me, it uh, it's 
I, I completely applaud the conscious decision to do it because uh, there's still a lot of people who, who don't practice safe sex and, I, and it's a good thing to do. Uh, <laughs> the, the, to me, it comes naturally just that two contemporary characters uh, would have this as a consideration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, when I do mention it, uh, for example, in uh, Sugar Daddy, when uh, Liberty, the heroine, sleeps with uh, the hero, uh, at this point she's shy, she's a little bit inhibited, and then, you know, so they're, they're going to sleep together. And so, you know, there, there is a condom on the nightstand. And so uh, I kind of added a moment of humor where she just grabs at it and she's like trying to open this <laughs> incredibly <laughs> difficult package. <laughs> and uh, so I think there's ways you can incorporate it that are, are fun or even sexy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I think if you're going to write a modern story, they should be thinking. It's got to be there. It's got to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah.